This episode of The Young Turks is brought to you by GoToMeeting. Online meetings made easy. Uh, unlikely ally today in the WikiLeaks case, a, a Republican congressman. Except when you find out who it is, you're going to say, no, that was likely. Right. But it was a strong, strong case that he made for it. Ron Paul from Texas stepping up at the floor of the House and kicking some ass. Let's go to the, the beginning of his speech here. Clip A. WikiLeaks release of classified information has generated a lot of attention worldwide in the past few weeks. The hysterical reaction makes one wonder if this is not an example of killing the messenger for the bad news. Despite what is claimed, information so far released, though classified, has caused no known harm to any individual, but it has caused plenty of embarrassment to our government. Losing a grip on our empire is not welcomed by the neoconservatives in charge. There is now more information confirming that Saudi Arabia is a principal supporter and financier of al-Qaeda, and this should set off alarm bells since we guarantee it's Sharia-run Sharia government. This emphasizes even more the fact that no al-Qaeda existed in Iraq before 9-11, and yet we went to war against Iraq based on the lie that it did. It has been charged by self-proclaimed experts that Julian Assange, the internet publisher of this information, has committed a heinous crime deserving prosecution for treason and execution or even assassination. But should we not at least ask how the U.S. government can charge an Australian citizen with treason for publishing U.S. secret information that he did not steal? And if WikiLeaks is the to be prosecuted for publishing classified documents, why shouldn't the Washington Post, the New York Times, and others that have also published these documents be prosecuted? Actually, some in Congress are threatening this as well. Documents! Okay. <laughs> what is that one? <laughs> it's just the lady from her local newscast. <laughs> she was against the documents. Uh, and uh, it, Ron Paul's in favor of releasing the documents, and he's right. And, and he's saying, look, these guys that are on the right, of course, referring to Fox News hosts and Sarah Palin saying we should drop a bomb on Assange's head. He's like, well, where do you stop? Are you going to do it in the New York Times next? And he's like, look, what's more harmful? Uh, the, what we did in invading these countries and getting these people killed or finding out about it? It's the most elementary question, and he's just a million percent right. Now, I, I have tremendous respect for Ron Paul. I mean, look, there are places where I wildly disagree with him. And I, and I wouldn't want him to be in charge, I'll be honest, okay? Because his ideas on tightening credit are draconian in the other direction, if you ask me, right? But he's such a great voice to have, because nobody else is saying this, Democrat or Republican. So now let's go to the end of his speech. Now he's listing all these interesting questions. We're going to catch him in the middle here and then, and then uh, watch the end. Number five, which has resulted in the greatest number of deaths? Lying us into war? or WikiLeaks revelations or the release of the Pentagon Papers. If Assange can be convicted of a crime for publishing information that he did not steal, what does this say about the future of the First Amendment and the independence of the Internet? Number seven, could it be that the real reason for the near universal attacks on WikiLeaks is more about secretly maintaining a seriously flawed foreign policy of empire than it is about national security. Number eight, is there not a huge difference between releasing secret information to help the enemy in the time of declared war, which is treason, and the releasing of information to expose our government lies that promote secret wars, death, and corruption? Number nine, was it not once considered patriotic to stand up to our government when it's wrong? Yeah. You know, uh, back in the day, uh, people would, during the primaries in 2008, and, you know, they, everybody would, his supporters, they don't say Ron Paul or Congressman Paul, they say Dr. Paul. Right. Dr. Paul. <clears throat> but you know what? I got to give it to him. That was a hell of a speech, Dr. Paul. Uh, you know, one of the, the hallmarks of the First Amendment and the press here in America is the notion that the Supreme Court has upheld prior restraint. Um, that you can't stop something, even if you think it's going to be bad, you can't stop them before they publish it. We can't have a system like they have in England where you keep information from showing up. 
Obviously, though, if we start prosecuting people like Julian Assange, no matter what you think of him, and I, I think there's some evidence that WikiLeaks has been uh, occasionally reckless, but no one else is doing it, and we have this giant sort of clamp on secrecy, so you're, 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 you're criticizing probably the wrong guy, and they can do it better. But so let's have them do it better. But you know, but that if we start doing this, the prosecution afterwards, you think that those uh, Republicans in Congress uh, and Sarah Palin and Fox News, no, they'll just want to take the next step. You know, it's not enough that we prosecute them. The problem is the information got out there, and we got to stop that. So then you're going to get to the point where the where the New York Times has a story that Bush ignored the wiretapping court and went around it and just ignored it and broke the law violated the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution, um, and they won't be able to do that story because it will, it, it endangers national security, and they'll stop it ahead of time, and then we live in a different country. And, and I'm not, you know, I, I'm not a slippery slope guy, but you start prosecuting people for releasing information that they didn't steal that doesn't aid the enemy, we're in a dangerous, horrible place. Like, this is a no-brainer. You can have an interesting conversation about the responsibility that WikiLeaks has, the responsibility that the media has in dealing with WikiLeaks, and they've been okay at times. Other times, they've just thrown information out there a little bit recklessly. Monday, some people who apparently hate Julian Assange in WikiLeaks are going to start their own thing called OpenLeaks, uh, and they're going to work more closely with media sources, and we're trusting then that those media sources are going to vet the stuff very thoughtfully. That's how this process is supposed to work and they're not going to throw stuff up as randomly, but the idea is still the same, an open avenue for whistleblowers to come forward to have information released. There's no point in prosecuting Julian Assange because you can't, so you could shut down WikiLeaks, the open leaks, and then, you know, licky leaks. I mean, it's all... It's, <laughs> I can't wait for licky leaks. That's going to be awesome. I mean, it's all coming. You can't... You, That's the 50 cents putting that one out. You can't... Uh, Man, you can't arrest them all. <laughs> all right, so uh, first of all, I totally agree. Look, I, I'm a guy, I, I'm going to give... You know I'm a big f fan of Julian Assange in the sense that uh, somebody had to do it, he did it, it was brave, and what, what always happens is that you, they criticize the manner in which you did it, right? Yes, that's right. Right? But it, that's bullshit, okay? They, they hate that he's actually revealing secrets that they wanted to keep because they were doing things that were wrong, like killing innocent journalists as we saw on the tape, in the right. Iraq tape you know, 15,000 extra civilians killed, which they never were going to admit until Julian Assange leaked this stuff, okay? But I, but I think the open leaks uh, development, it, I agree with Ben, is awesome, okay? Because then it's not just about one person, because this whole thing isn't, Julian Assange is a symbol. It's not that, okay, we live or die with Julian Assange. You know, it's, I'm incredibly happy that he started it. But even if open leaks is against Julian Assange, but they but they're yeah. leaking in a different way, great. Yes. Have at it, Hoss. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's being started by uh, by the former WikiLeaks spokesman who once referred to Assange as a slave driver. And ironically, they say one of the reasons that they're doing this is because Assange keeps the WikiLeaks process muddied and unclear. And they're like, man, we need transparency for us. People got to know what we're doing. Like you can't sort of have a crusade for transparency and openness in government and then have our process not be transparent. We're going to start this new thing. We're going to be totally transparent, and we're going to try to get more transparency from foreign states. And all of this leads back to the Thor data center, <laughs> okay, because Iceland is, is hopefully about to pass a law that says, all you leakers, we got your back, okay? We're going to protect you here, and you're going to be allowed to leak, and we're not going to bend to international pressure to s clamp down on you, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I, I hope they pass that law. And, and where they're going to store the, the servers is the Thor data no, center. No, that's great, the Thor data center. That's Come on. That's good stuff. <laughs> that's even better than LickyLeaks. Young Turks have a new sponsor, GoToMeetings. Online meetings made incredibly simple. You can set it up in two minutes, and you can talk to anyone from anywhere. And it's only $49 a month, and it's unlimited. You can actually go to gotomeeting.com slash Turks and get a 30-day trial. I never heard anybody.